The author of this presentation retains all title, copyright, trade secrets, patents, trademarks, and other proprietary rights in the work provided, including, but not limited to, the training session presented, and all written materials presented in conjunction with the training session webinar presentation, as well as in the names, logos, and marks associated with that work except for the license expressly granted for use within this program and to LEAD for Pollinators. This is a copyright protected presentation of LEAD for Pollinators Incorporated and may not be duplicated, shared, in any format or on any digital platform or device beyond this one-time share for, for pay-per-view of the Login to Learn and Creating Pollinator Habitat webinar series. Welcome to the Lead for Pollinators Login to Learn webinar. We are supported by Hispanic Marketing and Public Relations. Visit HispanicMPR.com for interviews, presentations, and more. BBB Seed specializes in wildflower seeds, heirloom vegetable seeds, grass seeds, regional wildflower mixes, and special use wildflower mixes, including their line of four great pollinator mixes. Shop for your garden and pollinator habitat at bbbseed.com. Two Million Blossoms magazine will awaken readers to the vast diversity of pollinating insects and animals. This quarterly magazine will delight, entertain, and name those well-adapted creatures buzzing through our world. Because the more we know about pollinators, the better we can provide habitat. This quarterly magazine explores how bees, birds, butterflies, and bats enhance our planet. Subscribe today using the discount code word LEAD and receive $5 off the subscription rate for one year. Visit 2millionblossoms.com. OPN Seed has partnered with LEAD for Pollinators with pollinator mixes created for beekeepers and anyone who wants to attract and support pollinators. You can get native seeds for eastern U.S. planting zones at OPN Seed. Go to the LEAD for Pollinators website and select the Donor Affiliations page to order your pollinator habitat seeds. Select Support Our Cause to view featured seed selections and a portion of sales generated from our website will help support our work. Missed a previous webinar? Our Login to Learn and Creating Pollinator Habitat webinars are now available on pay-per-view. Healthy Yards for Clear Streams, Site and Seed Selection for Planting Pollinator Habitat, and The First Five Years of Your Pollinator Habitat. Visit our website at leadforpollinators.org to select your pay-per-view webinar today. Farming is filled with challenges, like the weather, which are beyond the farmer's control. It is important for your own health, the health of your family, and the health of your business to have tools for managing the stress of farming's ups and downs. Amanda Bolin will draw on her family's experience with difficult change on their farm, as well as her expertise in mental health, to facilitate this session to equip you with effective strategies for taking care of yourself in hard times. This presentation was featured at the Lead for Pollinators October 2020 Virtual Conference, Becoming 21st Century Leaders, Women in Beekeeping and Agriculture. We are pleased to provide this important topic again. Please welcome Ohio State University Extension educators Amanda Bolin, Jamie Delafield, and Misty Harmon. Hey, uh, we are so excited to present this presentation for you when you can't control the weather, managing your stress on the farm. 
Uh, we are very sad that we couldn't be with you live in person, but due to internet connection difficulties uh, and living in the country, that's just some things we deal with, which I'm sure you all are familiar with. Uh, my name is Amanda Bolin. I'm the OSU Extension Family and Consumer Science Educator in Washington County. With us today is Jamie Delafield, who is also the FCS educator in Hardin County, and Misty Harmon, who is the FCS educator in Perry County. So we are going to get started here. Um, I'm going to share with you kind of what brought this uh, to the forefront. So um, this is my family, uh, the, the Bolin family. My husband is third generation dairy farmer. Um, and milk prices started to plummet and we could see that the end was in sight. Um, we, you know, did everything we could to get expenses down, uh, but at the end of the day, there's just only so much that you can do. Um, so in 2019, um, in April, our family sold off the last of our dairy cows. Uh, we do still have some heifers on the farm, um, but my husband was having to get an off the farm job. Um, and then after the farm sold, he was having to um, completely get an off the farm job, which uh, was very difficult for our family. Um, you know, when you do something that you've done your entire life, um, he had a lot of weight on his shoulders, feeling like he let down previous generations of our family and feeling like he was letting down um, our children. So we have two boys and a little girl and and he really took it to heart that, um, you know, he was ending what should have been theirs and what they were supposed to do for the rest of their life. Um, you know, in, in the end, it's just, it was just something that was completely out of our control with milk prices, um, but it, it really made me learn and grow as a person because we dealt with extremely stressful situations in our household. Um, and my husband and I would joke a lot and I would tell him, and he would say to me, I'm not stressed. What do you mean? I have I have stress all the time. The stress doesn't bother me uh, because he was half he was used to having to deal with those situations. Um, and to him, to him, it wasn't considered stress. But we know that that stress is an emotional or physical tension um, that it can come from any event. Um, it can make you feel frustrated, angry, nervous. Um, you're body's reaction can can be different you know you can have shortness of breath you can have some chest pains your palms can sweat right our body all experiences stress differently which misty's in a few minutes um sometimes stress is positive for us right uh the stress to meet that deadline when we procrastinate um we can have those little short bursts of stress that are positive um, but overall, if we have those negative effects of stress that are lasting a long time in turn, um, really starts to harm our health. Um, so we noticed for our family, we were having added weight gain. Um, and, and we know that added weight gain can control blood pressure and high cholesterol, um, you know, and then it can put you, um, in turn for heart disease or diabetes. Uh, so we really wanted to make sure that we were taking care of our health, uh, which was a huge component for myself to help kind of push our family past that. Uh, we know that in the farming community, um, it is agriculture is the most dangerous industry. 5.7% um, um, in agriculture, forestry, fishing, and hunting. Um, if your job is hazardous, it's also stressful as well. Like they go hand in hand. It's not one or the other. And we know that adverse conditions cause stress. So we have no control what the weather does. Um, you know, maybe it's too wet or we see the opposite. Things are too dry. Uh, we dealt with major cost issues, so fuel rise increasing, our fertilizer cost was increasing, the amount of money we were receiving for milk was down. It was actually cheaper for us to buy the milk at the grocery store and dump it in our bulk tank than it was to actually uh, produce the, the milk itself. 
Uh, we deal issues with weeds and insects and market prices are down. Uh, I've, I've already shared with you how we deal with rural stress, right? Um, grocery stores aren't close. Uh, gas is further away at times. There's not a gas station that's close. High speed internet is a huge issue. And right now everything is online and we deal with those lack of cell phone reception, good paying jobs. Uh, uh, we're isolated in and of itself because we have a farm, so we have lots of acreage, and so our neighbors are not are not close, and we can we can be extremely isolated uh, as it is. So our agricultural stress does impact the way we operate our farm. Um, it it impacts our management and our options. We, we know we deal with financial security when we're dealing with expenses and incomes and those numbers fluctuating. Uh, that in turn, uh, you know, suffers our individual health and well being. And as we become stressed, we can deal with anxiety or depression issues, which in turn, you know, folds over to our family well being. And when we're stressed at home, sometimes we take it out on our kids. Uh, which I'm not saying is, you know, the best course of action, but um, it is what it is. We're all guilty of it. It's it's natural. I don't want anyone to think that they're alone when, you know, they feel those stressful situations, but it does move over into our family well-being and our children are affected by it too. So we really want to make sure that you know those early warning signs and those signs and symptoms to look for. Thanks, Amanda. Welcome, everybody. And, um, you know, I worked in cardiac and pulmonary rehab for 22 years prior to joining Extension a couple years ago, um, actually about four years ago, and I saw the effects of stress left unchecked. Um, you know, I, I could count um, hundreds of patients over the years that I worked in that field who had had stress throughout the, their life in, in various forms. So some of those early warning signs, and really that's the first step into uh, to realizing that you're under stress is recognizing how you how you react to stress. Um, you know, in my parenting class, I always tell them that's the first step, knowing how your body reacts to that. Um, and, you know, eating or sleeping too much or too little certainly can be one of those. And I know when I have something, um, you know, coming up, oftentimes I don't sleep very well the night before. You know, when I was traveling, when we were allowed to travel, um, oftentimes I wouldn't sleep very well the night before because I was afraid I would miss the flight or if there was some, you know, big um, thing coming up, oftentimes I wouldn't sleep very well. You know, pulling away from people and usual activities. And certainly this one, you know, can be seen, um, you know, in, in, in a lot of forms. Um, and especially in agriculture, it can be difficult. Like Amanda said, it's already an isolated, you know, industry. Um, so, you know, really observing those little subtle changes that you might notice um, in yourself or in somebody else. Maybe they're not coming to, you know, breakfast uh, at the, you know, local diner anymore. Um, those kinds of things. Um, again, they can be very subtle. Uh, especially in, a, in an industry that's already kind of isolated. Um, so it can be a little bit harder to detect that, but really we want to pay attention to that. Having low or no energy, and I know for myself right now with the season starting to change, I'm really suffering from this and really struggling with this. Um, you know, so I, I know that, um, that, that that's something that I'm really trying to work on right now. Uh, feeling numb or like nothing matters. Um, sometimes people, you know, when they become stressed or start to get stressed, they kind of just shut down and kind of go into that. I don't care. I don't know. It doesn't matter kind of mode just because that's their way of dealing with stress. Um, you know, like Amanda said, some people react and it goes out to everybody else and affects them and then other people kind of shut down and kind of go into themselves um, having unexplained aches and pains you know when there's and and this is oftentimes why people will end up going to the doctor is that they're having these pains and things um, physical symptoms um, and that's often what drives people to end up going to the doctor um, but really you know when there's no real reason necessarily there wasn't an accident or you know um, I'm a little sore today but I did weights a couple days ago and 
and I hadn't done weights in a while. So that's, you know, that that's an explanation there. Um, and then that feeling of helplessness or hopelessness. And, you know, when I'm, like Amanda talked about earlier, there are a lot of things in the ag industry that you have absolutely no control over. Um, and so, you know, it, it's already, um, you know, prone to having those feelings anyway. You can't control Mother Nature. You can't control a lot of things. Um, but this would be even more, um, you know, people expressing those feelings of that hopelessness and helplessness, um, you know, beyond, a, you know, that regular, oh, it's Mother Nature type of thing. Um, hearing voices or believing that things are not true. Um, you know, sometimes um, people may um, start to kind of take on a negative mind thought where, you know, and, and it's everything is kind of negative in there, even though, you know, somebody from the outside may not necessarily see that. Um, they uh, per perceive everything as being in a negative light. Having persistent thoughts and memories you can't get out of your head. Um, you know, again, you know, oftentimes when you're under stress, you just keep replaying it over and over and over those thoughts, um, and it's very difficult to move on and, and kind of move past those things. Of course, thinking of harming yourself or others, that's definitely a, a big warning sign. And even if you don't think that that person necessarily will follow through on it, if anybody ever, um, you know, even jokingly mentions that, we really want to take that seriously and, you know, kind of question them further about that. Um, inability to perform daily tasks, you know, people not being able to keep up with the things that they usually do. Um, and, you know, like on the farm, maybe it's not quite as manicured as it usually is. Maybe, you know, there's things, uh, their equipment's not in quite as good a repair as it used to be. Uh, kids, you know, their kids aren't getting to school on time or to work. Um, or again, maybe they're not, you know, following through on their commitments of, you know, things that they may have done in the past. Of course, smoking, drinking, or using drugs, um, or using more than usual. Um, and, you know, especially right now during the, this COVID, you know, I, I've seen studies of how much alcohol use has increased over the time. I was just astounded by, you know, the, the amount of uh, increase in uh, beer. And then I read like hard liquor is up even more than that. And so, you know, again, some people use that as a form of coping. Um, and again, you know, that, that this is a negative coping skill. So we want to try to um, think of positive ones. You know, again, being forgetful, um, you know, I, I'm, I'm guilty of walking into the room and forgetting why I come in there, but this would be more than that usual, right? Um, or being on edge, like Amanda, you know, indicated earlier, maybe taking things out on your family or your loved ones, um, you know, being worried, scared, all of those things. Um, again, more so than usual. There are some people who tend to be warriors by nature, but we're talking this is more than, the, the, than that usually is for them. And there again, Amanda talked about it yelling or fighting with family experiencing severe mood swings that cause problems you know in our relationships and that can be our work relationships our um, you know family relationships um, all different kinds of that and so again those stress levels can negatively affect you and amanda alluded to some of those as well earlier you know the physical health our mental health our behavioral health, the, the kind of those habits that we do, our relational health, and certainly then our occupational health. And there at the bottom, I love that. Good stress management is good farm management, right? So when you are able to manage your stress better or whomever it is, then the, the farm is going to benefit from that. So it's really important that we take these things, um, you know, seriously. And again, you know, some of these Amanda kind of alluded to, but um, headaches, fatigue, I mean, I'm not going to read through all of them. Um, you know, you can see them there. Certainly that rise in blood pressure. Um, you know, this is one of the most important numbers. Many of the patients that I saw in the medical field um, had high blood pressure left untreated for, you know, many, many years. Um, and that does a lot of negative things in, in inside your body and you're not necessarily be aware of that um, increased heart rate, um, weakened immune system, and especially during this time right now of, you know, COVID and everything else, we definitely, uh, you know, need all of that immunity that we can um, to help us fight off all kinds of things and heading into the regular flu season as well, um, you know, and our blood clots. Uh, faster when we're under stress. Our bodies release cortisol, which is the stress hormone, and that can cause all kinds of things going on inside of us that we, you know, may not necessarily know. 
let alone, you know, the physical signs. Um, and again, you know, some of these emotional signs, I've already went over some of those, um, you know, but that again, anxiousness or nervousness, that irritability is uh, again, another one, uh, you know, and, and even aside from the farm stress, you may see these in people right now, um, just because of, you know, the, the situation that we're living in, um, in general, in the world, um, feeling overwhelmed or burned out, um, you know, definitely uh, these Zoom sometimes I can feel that, <laughs> you know, feel that Zoom, uh, Zoom fatigue and all of those things, um, you know, but again, uh, recognizing when these things are starting to get to us is really important. Of course, again, some of those behaviors, Amanda mentioned overeating, you know, and, and actually people always associate stress with overeating but what a lot of people don't realize is that a lot of people can't eat when they're stressed it nauseates them or makes them you know feel physically ill to eat when they're under stress um you know of course the the using drugs and that smoking and then again maybe poor poor grooming so maybe they're not shaving as frequently as they used to or getting their hair done and some of that might be covid related right now um, you know my son's not been going to get his haircut i've been doing that so but um you know we're talking uh, just their general, you know, kind of overall what they look like um, may not be quite to the, the level that it usually is that we would usually see them. And so again, you know, this is so incredibly important. Your health is the most important asset, you know, as an agricultural worker, a farmer, you know, it, if you don't take care of yourself, it's going to be much more difficult to manage the farm and to take care of the farm and all the other responsibilities. So self care is not selfish. It's imperative and it's incredibly important that we take that time that we need um, to do that. And you can see their health and safety is the most important priority in managing any farm or ranch operation, making sure that our employees are doing well as as well um, that that may be there so again you know kind of thinking about yourself as well as other um, I love this you know recognizing when stress is affecting how you or a loved one lives laughs and loves so you know again those relationships are we able to enjoy things that we used to are we able to carry out our daily functions and um, if if we're, those are starting to be impacted then we need to start wondering and, and, and kind of thinking about that this is going beyond just that typical stress um, that somebody might have. And so my favorite thing is talking about healthy ways to manage stress. Again, having worked in cardiac and pulmonary rehab um, for all those years, uh, I got to talk a lot about this. So I love it when I get to. Um, and of course, eating healthy is one of the most important things you can do. You know, when it's kind of like um, your, your farm equipment, right? If you don't put the right fuel in there or the, the good fuel in there, then they're not going to produce, you know, or run as well. It's the same thing with our bodies. If we're not putting in quality, um, you know, food into us, then we're not going to be able to run as well as we could otherwise. And so again, um, you know, you don't have to make major changes. Just think of incorporating, you know, a few, uh, maybe a few more vegetables a, a day or something like that. Um, and of course, moving more. And I know you all are, you know, in the agricultural industry and you think I'm active all the time and that's great, um, you know, but and, and we're not meant to be sedentary. So the fact that you all do, um, you know, get a lot of activity is really good. Um, you know, my favorite thing is to laugh. Um, I love to be around people that make me laugh. I love to laugh um, and it's really great for stress. It helps, um, you know, with us with managing that stress. And of course, this is not one that's real uh, easy for a lot of people is to talk, talk, talk. I'm a natural talker, so there's no problem here, um, you know, but a lot of people, um, you know, and I, I bet Amanda can attest her husband is not exactly, you know, the, the best talker. Um, Jamie and me and Amanda are, are all very good talkers um, so you know it, it's um, kind of difficult to imagine somebody not being able but really encouraging um, you know those loved ones your friends and family to, to talk and to reach out and asking them open-ended questions um, you know how are things how have things been going you know I'm concerned about you those kinds of things um, and spending time with people friends and family um, that's a great way to manage stress of course listening to music and it doesn't matter whatever kind of music you know makes you happy whatever kind of music brings you joy and a lot of times people find writing in journals beneficial now hear me out many of you are already keeping track of lots of things on a day-to-day -day basis you may be keeping track of the the rainfall you may be keeping track of you know how much fertilizer did you put on this or how much of this and so jotting down how you felt that day 
you know, felt great, sunshine and whatever, right? Um, and you can look back and see if there's any kind of patterns to how you feel. Um, so again, you know, you don't have to buy like a journal and if, if you're already doing things, just note, jot down notes like that. Of course, you can read. A lot of people, um, one of our colleagues in another county, reading is what fills her soul. She loves it, and when she hasn't read for a few days, you know, she can feel herself kind of getting stressed, so that's a great one. Positive self-talk and thinking, and when I'm, when I say that, think about how you I used to tell my patients, you know, you talk to yourself more than you do anybody else in a day. Can you imagine what goes on in my head, right? Because I talk, talk, talk anyway. So, you know, what's going on in here? But really, how do you talk to yourself? When you make a mistake, what do you do? Do you beat yourself up and say, oh, that was dumb, you know, or do you say, not your brightest move, but you're going to do better, right? So really kind of trying to reframe how we talk to ourselves. Being mindful, you know, uh, many of our colleagues um, in family and consumer science uh, practice mindfulness, and I'm, I'm trying to get there. I'm trying to do better about that, but staying in the moment and really paying attention to what's going on now because our minds can race ahead to the future um, or they can be dwell, dwelling in the past and we can't control either one of those. The only moment we can control is this one. And so being present in that moment and not letting our thoughts kind of take off and, and um, get out of control. Uh, uh, many people find prayer and meditation to be very beneficial, um, you know, uh, and there's some research that shows the benefits of, of both of those. Um, so if that's something that, that you have found to be beneficial, um, you know, practicing those can definitely help with stress. <sighs> Taking a deep breath. It's one of the easiest and most simple things to do. And maybe you have to take several deep breaths, right? Um, but you can do this anywhere at any time. And really, physiologically, it gives your body time. Your heart rate reduce goes down. Your blood pressure goes down when you take deep breaths. And it gives you a second to think about what you might want to say or might want to do. <laughs> and is that really the best thing to do at that point? Um, and then, you know, just just taking a break and daydreaming, you know, just thinking about um, go out and lay down in the grass and look at the sky and the clouds, um, you know, or whatever that is. Um, and then practicing relaxation techniques. So there are different techniques that you can do, kind of tensing one body part and then relaxing that. There's guided meditations where you can listen to a tape and it kind of walks you through a scenario, maybe a beach or in the woods. Um, so those are all really good. And then, of course, you know, having a something that you enjoy doing. Um, you know, I tell my parents all the time in parenting class, you know, find things that make you happy. When you are happy and fulfilled, as then you can be a better parent. So again, if you want to be a better parent, farmer, spouse, whatever it is, um, you know, do things that fill you up. Um, we can't give from an empty cup. Um, ask uh, for help when needed. You know, there's no shame in asking people to help you. And, and you know, we're going to talk a little bit about that, but, you know, it's often difficult for people in this field to do that. But really, you know, people want to help. They often just don't know what to start or what you need help with. Um, and I know I'm guilty. I, I have difficulty asking for help as well. Um, you know, stay up to date on the ag trends. Uh, you know, there's lots of bulletins, lots of different places that you can do this, uh, you know, to help you kind of um, kind of foresee what's coming up, right? So that, that you can prepare as much as you can for those changes that may be coming in the market or in produce or you know, whatever kind of um, produce products. Like Amanda said, you know, feed went up and the gas went up and all of those things and so if you're paying attention to that you can kind of maybe start preparing for those potential changes um, as the markets uh, adjust and change um, and again you know making those long-term goals um, will help uh, with succession planning and all kinds of other things that that may be worrying you um, you know or, or you're thinking about so if you can get some of that stuff down then you can let it go and kind of be done with that um, you know having those family check-ins kind of seeing how everybody's doing you know, even people who may not necessarily have done this in the past, a lot of people are doing this right now just because of the situation we're living in. Um, and then, of course, avoiding those unhealthy de-stress methods, which, you know, we talked about some of those just a bit. I'm going to turn it over to Jamie now. She's going to talk about mental health. Thanks, Misty. So everybody take just a second and process all of that that Misty told you, right? We've got the what to do when stress is overtaking us, right? And how do we identify those signs of stress in ourselves? And then we've also got those things that we can do when we want to relax. So there's this kind of weird, 
you know, dichotomy between the things that Misty said, because you're probably thinking, oh my gosh, if I have to add all of those things to make me healthier into my day, I'm probably going to be even more stressed. We don't want you to think that. But what we do want to talk to you about is that taking small steps towards um, stress reduction can really help your mental health. We know that one in four um, Americans, adults, American adults, and actually one in um, five American adolescents has been diagnosed with a mental health disorder. And what we know is that when our brain is not working correctly and when we have too much stress, that can also cause our brain to not be able to handle all of the other things that are coming at us. So take a look at this list. There are all sorts of things that we can think about that are related to our mental health. Anxiety, depression, substance misuse, bipolar disorder, eating disorders. Um, some individuals engage in non-suicidal self-injury. We talk about post-traumatic stress, which honestly is very common for those of you in the agriculture industry. There are a lot of things that are traumatic that happened to us. And I am just realizing that this is a slide that we took from someplace else, um, I believe Pixabay. And unfortunately, I'm noticing that traumatic is spelled wrong. So we may have to go in and make our own word cloud later. And I'm just focused on that right now, I think because not only are we living in a pandemic, but we're also knowing and seeing more within agriculture, right? That a trauma is anything outside of you that affects how you live, love, laugh, and play. And so you are experiencing that on a daily basis because you've got so many outside factors that are coming your way. So we know that because we have a tendency to be able to um, have an adult beverage on occasion and they're readily available, that when we start seeing stress more, and Misty talked about this being an unhealthy coping mechanism, we can, dis we can develop a substance um, misuse disorder. What happens then is that that co-occurs, which means it happens at the same time as another disorder that maybe has not yet been diagnosed. So you may have a diagnosable illness of anxiety or, dis or um, depression or post-traumatic stress, but you're coping with alcohol or with wine or with, um, you know, I hate to say this, but you might be using, you know, marijuana is becoming legalized. You may be using um, some things like that, or you may be using heroin or meth or crack. I hope that we are not misusing anything, but we know that it's becoming all of that more and more common. But we, because things are common and substance misuse is acceptable, that's why we see that it co-occurs with other things. So we want to let you know too that one of the things that we know in Ohio and things that are on the rise is that opioid um, misuse and prescription drug misuse is also very common in this co-occurrence. One in four agriculture workers have reported taking an opioid without a prescription or abusing prescribed opioids. And that in turn leads to becoming addicted to opioids. So we want you to keep in mind how you're utilizing your prescription medications um, and thinking about that and having conversations with your doctor as well. So what do we know? We know that mental health overall, all of these diagnosable things, um, mental health is our, our emotional, psychological, and social well-being. It affects how we live, laugh, love, and play. So our thoughts, our feelings, our actions. It determines how we handle how we live, how we engage with other people, what choices we make, how we're handling our stress, and what happens. Our biological makeup is huge. If you have a family member who is living with a mental health problem, diagnosed or undiagnosed, that's going to affect how you live, laugh, love, and play. The things that you've experienced in your life are contributing factors, as well as your family history. So there are so many things, and stress seems to be the underlying one where we start to notice and recognize that we're not ourselves, and that's what leads us to the doctor to talk about our mental health. So like we said, don't be afraid to go to the doctor. If you're not feeling like yourself, this is very, very common. It's very common, but you're the one who probably knows that, or maybe your friends and family have said, boy, you just really don't seem like yourself lately. I'm really worried about you. So one in four American adults experience a diagnosed mental health disorder every year. Anxiety disorders, 19.1%. Substance misuse disorder, 8%. A major depressive order, 6.8%. But the key to all of this is for all of us to just be aware and to start talking because the majority of mental health disorders begin by the age of 14 to 24. 
So we're looking at those young adult ages where our brains are still developing, where we're beginning to see those signs and symptoms um, in a more clear way. And you may say, well, I'm way past that. Well, let me tell you, the median age of onset for depression is actually, help me out here, Misty. I want to say, what is it? 35. 35. Yeah, I was going to say 45, but that wasn't right. 35. And the reason for that is because many adults are, are diagnosed with depression for the first time during retirement years and during life changing years when your kids are when you become empty nesters again. So please just be aware of yourself. And I'm going to turn it back over to Misty. Uh, actually, you're turning it back over oh, to sorry, me. Oh, sorry, I'm turning it back over to Amanda. <laughs> That's I can't okay. my own writing it. <laughs> but so most of you may be thinking, you know, Jamie, that's great mental illness. So most of us tend to think, okay, it's a homeless person on a city street. It's, you know, an out of control teenager who is who is dealing being a juvenile delinquent, essentially. Uh, you know, it's a person in a psych ward. Um, I am guilty myself saying if I have to homeschool my children, somebody's going to have to visit me in a psych ward because I don't think I can handle it. Um, it's people who make poor choices. They should know the difference between right and wrong. And it's always someone else. So we really want to encourage you to think that it's actually a farmer or a rancher who just sold off their family farm. It's stress changing in rural economies. It's someone who has to drive 50 plus miles to meet with a therapist. Um, you know, mental mental health professionals are not readily available in our rural com in our rural communities. Some of us deal with telemedicine. Um, in in my county, we do have a lot of migrant farm workers who come in and work. You know, seasonal wise. Um, a few of us think that it could actually be yourself. Uh, we know cold hard facts is that we don't have access to professionals in these um, rural parts of our state. Um, we are lacking a choice of providers. There are people who um, think that it is always someone else and they don't want those people living close to them. Um, we know that more than 60% of rural Americans live in a mental health professional shortage area. More than 65% of rural Americans get their mental health care from their primary care provider. Um, you know, those sources are not readily available. Um, our providers are isolated. We, um, as agriculture workers, are isolated. Um, different services can become confusing and complex when they're throwing out different terms and we're not sure what they're saying and insurance and coinsurance and deductible and um, there are all of these new terms that we're having to learn. Um, some providers we know play the what plays rather than or what pays rather than what works. Uh, so some providers don't want to meet with you and discuss things and get to know you first before they figure out your health plan. Um, they just, you know, maybe only see you one day a week or one day a month and they're just giving you what the insurance is going to be covered. Uh, so we really want to make sure that we are taking care of ourselves um, and that we're helping break down the stigma. So you know, that was one way that we got here. Um, most of the time people see mental health issues as discrimination against someone else. Um, there is this, oh, it can't happen to me mentality. Um, it's it's not a one size fits all. We, we need to make sure um, that we are paying attention to what our body is saying, like those signs and symptoms that Misty shared with. And one thing that we wanted to share with you, but we're running out of time for, um, is this elephant in the room video. So if you get a chance, we would encourage you to kind of get onto YouTube um, and watch this video. It, it gives you a nice account of how people think 
um, that there's this elephant in the room and nobody wants to talk about it when in reality, uh, you know, if you were to ask me, I would I would tell you, yes, I I did have some anxiety issues. Um, I noticed them when my when my children were small. Um, you know, it was those signs and symptoms. I was more irritable. I was taking things out on my family. Um, I ended up grabbing my son by his leg and my husband yelled across the room, Amanda, what are you doing? And it was just one of those, it was almost like it was an out of body experience. Like I had no idea who this person was. That's not me. That's not something I do. And I kept telling myself that, you know, it wasn't an anxiety issue. I'm sure it was something else. Um, you know, my mom had had issues with her thyroid and I was really tired a lot. So I just, you know, said it's got to be my thyroid. Uh, so I made an appointment to see my family doctor. I went in. She said, OK, tell me what's going on. And I just broke down and cried. And she said, Amanda, do you hear everything you are saying to me? You're a full time teacher. You're a mom of two children under the age of three. You have a farm. You're getting your master's online. Like you have a lot of stress and things on your plate. Um, and it wasn't until she prescribed, prescribed me a safe medication that I took during that time that I, I didn't realize the changes that had come over me. They had just been those small, subtle changes. And it wasn't until one of my students said, Mrs. Bolin, you're smiling again. Um, I, I hadn't been smiling and no one had said anything to me until one of them did. Um, you know, and I just needed it for that season. Um, I didn't have to continue to take it. Sometimes we just need things at certain times in our life. Sometimes they're short. Sometimes they're a little longer, but it's not that it's a bad thing. We want to make sure that you are taking care of yourself because we're all guilty of. And this is where I will turn it back over to Jamie on maintaining our tractors, but not maintaining ourselves. Thanks for sharing your story, Amanda. Um, you know, as Amanda is sharing too, some of us do. I have been um, diagnosed with generalized anxiety disorder. I will never not take medication. I, I, I am not okay without my medication, but it took me a very, very long time. And I had a very similar story to Amanda where I realized with my children, that wow, that is not the mom I want to be. Um, and it really does make a difference. And so one of the things that we wanna encourage you to do is to think about everything else that you make a priority and remember that you are a priority. One of the things about being in agriculture is that we are proud. We are proud people and proud people means I can stick a Band-Aid on something that needs stitches and I'm still gonna be fine. When it comes to your stress and to your mental health, sometimes a Band-Aid isn't gonna cut it. So we really want to encourage you to think about that. And that's why we're here. The more we talk about this, the more we can break down that it's somebody else. All of us live with or know somebody who has um, experienced a mental health problem, whether it's short term or long term. And so we know that the statistics are showing us, right, that more and more farmers are engaging in suicidal thought more and more farmers are attempting to take their own life. Um, and one of the things that we want to know and that we want to point out to you when we think about that is that we want to encourage you to know where the statistics are coming from and to find out if they're biased or not. We want to stick with government studies and we want to avoid generalized statements about mental health and about um, suicide. So we do know, and this came from the CDC, that suicide is the leading cause of death in the United States. I um, mean, it has increased in every state from 1999 through 2016. And you can see there's a variety of reasons, relationship problems, systematic um, substance use, financial problems, losing our housing. Um, maybe we've gotten in trouble with the law or we were not able to pay our taxes. Um, stress is overtaken, I have a physical health problem, I've been diagnosed with something that seems insurmountable, or I've had a crisis that has come up in the past couple of weeks and I'm just not sure where to turn. So if you are in a place right now or have had suicidal thought, please know you're not alone. It is very, very common. We want to encourage you though, please, your 
your primary care physician is always a really great place to start. Um, and we just want to um, remind you that every single one of you is a person who would probably give every body part to somebody if they needed it. It does not show weakness if you ask for help for yourself. We know that in agriculture, we are a community that steps up. It's okay to be the person who needs support once in a while. It does not show weakness. It is actually showing strength. And I want you to just hear that. It does not show weakness to ask for help. It is actually showing strength. And so what can you do? Well, we're gonna tell you. We, um, there's a course called um, Mental Health First Aid. And we do offer that through Ohio State University. Many of your local um, mental health and recovery services boards also offer that within communities. But there is a class that you can take that will help you even more recognize signs and symptoms to help another person. And in that, you learn what's called the algae method. And in the algae method, you're learning how to identify signs and symptoms of suicide, how to listen to actually listen and not just respond, how to give reassurance and information. So where are those local networks? How to help somebody, how to take them to the doctor if the doctor's an hour and a half away, and then how to do some of those things that Misty shared with us earlier, those self-help and those other support strategies, learning to identify those. So. We know that one of the things that happens, and we're going to point this out to you because we've shared a lot about the substance misuse stuff, is that so many times we are seeing that we misuse our medications. And I pointed out that out to you all earlier, but I want you guys to take a look at all the medication that maybe we are misusing. And the reason, if you notice that you're misusing any of these things, talk to your family doctor. Chances are your stress is overtaking you and you are coping um, in a way that maybe is not the most positive. So I'm gonna turn it over to Misty and she is going to share about resilience. Thanks, Jamie. Yes, and resilience, you know, again, different definitions when I ask people, what, what does that mean? But really, uh, Merriam-Webster's, I love their, their definition. It's the, an ability to recover from or adjust easily to misfortune or change. That easily is not always the case. Um, but again, you know, we hear a lot about resilience and building resiliency in youth, um, but we also need to think about building resiliency in ourselves. And, you know, many of you are incredibly resilient and in finding things to, you know, make of things work and to adjust to this, but how resilient are you in within yourself? You know, again, um, you know, there are different ways you can do that to help build that resiliency, that ability to adjust to change. And I always tell people kids uh, or youth are incredibly resilient compared to adults. They can adjust to change a lot easier than we can. Um, but some of the things that we can do, um, you know, is finding a sense of purpose. And, you know, that can be difficult, especially like Amanda said, if your purpose has been to be a farmer your entire life and now that's gone, you know, what else is there? What else, um, you know, what else can you do? Uh, to to have find that sense of purpose, you know, um, her husband is is now able to teach ag, um, you know, as a teacher. She didn't share that with you, but I will, um, you know. So while you know he doesn't get to to do the farming as much, he gets to pass that on that love of farming and that love of agriculture to the next generation of students that he sees every day, um, you know. So forgiveness again, we're going to make mistakes. Um, other people are going to make mistakes, and kind. I, I, I didn't mean to, to jump over that one, um, you know, but right now, especially with the elections coming up and, you know, the, the culture that we're living in, kindness is incredibly important, um, uh, you know, and that connection. And again, with the agriculture field being kind of isolated, it can be difficult, but really reaching out. Uh, some people now actually have said that they've been more connected because of technology and things like that. So if you haven't really embraced some of the benefits that we can get from technology, this might be a great time to do that. Sometimes we just have to accept things to, um, you know, and, and just kind of move beyond that, that we can't change it, um, you know, but we're going to do our best to, to move through that and on um, past that, you know, maintaining our composure. And again, that can be difficult when there's very heated situations, um, but also, you know, remembering that it's OK, uh, you know, to, to break down sometimes too. you know, like Jamie said, you know, reaching out for help is not a sign of weakness. And so if we do lose our composure every now and then, um, you know, uh, 
it's okay. I mean, we're all doing the best we can. Just apologize, you know, to those that you might have lost it and, and move on. And having that patience, that optimism, and really gratitude, you know, and that can be difficult at times too. You know, Amanda has told this story before. I've heard her tell a lot of times, you know, people would say, well, at least this to her husband, right? At least you can still do this. At least you can still do that. You know, so it can be difficult, you know, and he would tell her, but Amanda, I, I you know, I can't farm. Like, that's what I want to do, you know, and so, you know, uh, finding that gratitude can be difficult, but it can be really powerful if you can find those little things to, to hold on to. Because that positive mental attitude really does, positive mental health really does help us to realize our full potential. Like Jamie said, she'll never go without medications because she knows that, that she would not live the same kind of life, the same quality of life that she does with those medications. And it's okay that that's what her body requires and her brain requires. That is okay. There are patients that have had heart disease that will have to be on blood pressure medicines and other heart medicines and nobody would think anything different about them. In fact, they would get a lot of flack if they didn't take those medications. And so when people need to be on those medications for a long term or for their life, it's okay. Um, it helps them to live, laugh, and love like we've said before. Um, that positive mental health also helps us cope with those stresses of life. It helps us to work productively and make meaningful contributions. Again, that live, laugh, and love um, and, and play as Jamie said. And I love this quote, never give up on someone with mental illness when I is replaced by a we, illness becomes wellness. And that it could not be more true, you know, in the situation that we're all going through right now, and especially in the agricultural community, you know, reaching out to those people that you see struggling. And if you are struggling yourself, don't be afraid to reach out to somebody else and get that help that you need so that you can live that um, productive life and take care of your farm and everything else you need to. Jamie, I'm gonna turn back to you. All right, so we just want to encourage you. We have a lot of great resources. Um, please go visit go.osu.edu on backslash ag crisis. You can also Google search um, Ohio State University in um, farm stress and a lot of other resources will come up that are also um, that have been put together since um, the start of this pandemic. We want to be here to support you. And if you need anything, I know we're getting close to time. So I just want to say on behalf of myself and um, Misty and Amanda, we've got a whole plethora of things that we can share with you. So please reach out um, and we will be happy to connect you. We do encourage you when you are searching the Internet, please make sure that um, after you type in your keywords, you do type the word site.gov site.edu, site.org, so that you do come up with some research-based information and not just um, somebody's opinion, um, because we do know, right, what we know about opinions. And so we want to make sure that you have research-based <laughs> information. So thank you all so much for being with us. Um, please let us know if we can help with anything. Again, like Amanda said, we're sorry we couldn't be with you in person, but we're grateful um, to be able to share with you this way and hope to hear from you soon. Thanks so much. Have a wonderful day. I, it, while any of you may have some questions, the chat is still active, um, even though this is pre-recorded. Um, so you can go ahead and type any questions that you do have or any additional comments or stories you'd like to share with us. Um, if it's one for one, a, a question for one of us in particular, you can go ahead and put our names. Um, and then Michelle is gonna make sure that she gets those to us uh, so we can respond back and be able to answer your questions. So on behalf of Ohio State University Extension, thank you all so much for having us today. We greatly appreciate it. Um, and it was a pleasure uh, to discuss with you um, a topic that is very passionate to the three of us. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, I gotta go. <laughs> I know, I need to. All right, bye. I don't know how to stop recording. Go to your three dots and hit there. I just stopped it.